Hi, let's talk about reminders of faith, things that strengthen your faith, remind you of faith, encourage your faith, that sort of thing. Reminders of faith. Well, to begin with, we'll look at what is faith and how do you get faith and how do you strengthen your faith after you have it and keep it and keep it strong. And then we'll look at some reminders that help in that process and um, art being one of them. I'm a Christian artist, so I uh, come from a Christian artist perspective. So the first question is, what is faith? Faith is really quite simple. Um, Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So it is essentially the story of Christ and believing that Jesus Christ came as God, he died for your sins, he overcame sin, death, and the devil, and was raised from the dead. And all this was done for you because we, each of us have sinned and we have fallen short of what is needed and expected from God to, uh, to live eternally and for today. So we have fallen short and we needed a Savior to help us, and that is Christ. So faith is real simple. It's believing that. It's believing that Christ came, that he died for you, and that he did, in fact, forgive your sins. So then when someone comes up to you and says, when you die, what will happen to you? Will you be going to heaven? You can with confidence say, yes, not I hope so, or I think so, or God willing, but rather you have the confidence and the assurance to say yes. It's the yes is the belief. And so it's just believing this. Now we can't see Christ. He's not here. Um, he died 2,000 years ago and was raised from the dead 2,000 years ago. Um, there's a story of Thomas who wanted to, who had trouble with believing in faith. And he said, I'm not going to believe until I can touch your wounds and see for myself that, that you're real, that it's really you. And, and Christ said, blessed are those who won't be able to do that, but who will believe and, and without seeing. So faith is not seeing Christ in person. Not yet, not till heaven. But it is believing that he came and that he died for you specifically. And in that death, forgiveness was given to you. So that is faith in a nutshell. Now the question is, how do we get faith? Well, we get faith by hearing. Romans 10, 17 tells us, Faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. So, it's real simple. The word and the connectedness we have to God is primary, primarily through the Bible. So the hearing is through the word of God, which is the Bible. So when we read the Bible, faith is formed. When we hear someone say to you a proclamation of you are a child of God and God has died for you and you are a sinful person and Christ has forgiven your sins, which makes you clean and right for heaven and to be uh, connected with God. And it is that forgiveness and through the word that the faith is formed. So. Faith is formed by what is heard, and it's, it's the word. It also means by what is read, uh, meaning scripture. You can also get faith by hearing a sermon. It's the word spoken through a pastor. That is also the word. When a pastor brings a message to you that brings you and invites you into Christ and says you are a child of God, not would you like to be? Not if you do these things you can be, but rather Christ has done all the action. Christ has made it hap happen for you. So when this pastor in his sermon says, you are a child of God, it is that message then that creates the faith. It's the word. That word can be um, a very, very powerful word that changes us from being one separated from God to being one that's connected with God. So this is extremely important for Christians. So now the question comes up, how do I grow my faith? I'm a Christian. 
and I value my Christianity and I want to grow, grow deeper in it and I want to um, be more active and alive in Christ. So how do I do that? Well, you do that the same way that you first receive the faith. You do it through Scripture. Scripture is so powerful. The Holy Spirit speaks to us when we read the Bible. And any good sermon and any good worship service is based on Scripture. So it's just Scripture coming in, in uh, waterfalls to, to you to bring you God and to bring you Christ and to make you fresh and new again and to create a clean spirit within you. And so it's strengthened by knowledge and spending more time in the Word, reading your Bible on a regular basis. The focus changes from me and what I can get. Um, a lot of times people will go to and looking for a worship service. They'll think to themselves, what does it do for me? Do I get anything out of it? And that's a valid question. But um, I think what happens as, we, as our faith grows and when we become more mature Christians, we change our focus from me, what can I get from me, to how can I help others? What can I do to, for, to this body? The church is considered the body of Christ. Um, and, and we're given spiritual gifts to help us in that body. And so then the question comes back to what has Christ empowered me to do to help my church body, to help the people in my church? And then to go beyond that even and to say, what has Christ enabled me to do to bring uh, the message and to be a disciple for the entire community or country or world? So there's a lot packed into how do I go from being a, an immature Christian to a mature Christian. And the main focus of that process is Bible. S reading your Bible on a regular basis. Studying your Bible regularly. You get to the point where you depend on others to help you with that. You depend on Bible studies. You depend on a good church service, worship, and sermon. And, um, and that's very helpful. So I encourage you to get involved with the church. It's a great way to grow your faith. Um, but there's other things you can do in addition to that, and that is to, on a regular basis, read your Bible, and not only read it, but study it. As an active Christian, you're going to be involved in church, and in that worship service, there are many elements that help grow your faith. Baptism is a huge part of the worship service um, and becoming a Christian. And it's, a, it's a, an exciting moment when someone is baptized as an infant or an adult. And um, it's a time where all of heaven celebrates. And it's a, it's a beautiful, wonderful, exciting event. And it's part of our worship service. Uh, another part that I really appreciate um, is communion. In communion, you have a closeness to God that uh, you won't get elsewhere. In communion, there are many things that happen. It's not just bread and wine and coming together in a small group to eat and drink. It's much more than that. It's the body of Christ given for you. But in, in addition, and wrapped up with that, are uh, the promise of the forgiveness of your sins. Many times during the worship service, you'll hear a confession and absolution time, a time for you to confess your sins before God. And then you'll hear the pastor say that you are forgiven. Um, you are forgiven and um, it, those sins are gone and they're done. So, and it's a word that you don't hear outside of the church. And it's so important that you come and hear that word because we need to hear that our sins are forgiven. And that is also part of the communion process. The pastor in giving you the bread and wine, it is for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, it is also a closeness that the body and blood of Christ is intermixed with the bread and wine, and that's how close he is to you. As you are eating the bread and wine, you are being renewed, you are being refreshed, you are being forgiven, and you have a connectedness with God that you will not find elsewhere. So when you associate that with all of the many things that are connected with just one simple act of communion, um, just looking at a chalice 
can bring back all those memories and all those thoughts. And it's very powerful. Just the image that in our mind we associate images with story and meaning. And that meaning is extremely powerful. So this brings us right into Christian art. How is it that Christian art can serve as a reminder for your faith and to help strengthen your faith even? Well, our thoughts um, are triggered by our visual stimulus. So if I see something, like I'd mentioned the chalice, if I see that chalice, it unfolds for me many meanings and many stories. And, uh, and, and it brings, just in seeing it, it brings a reminder. And it serves as a reminder. And so you can see how symbolism works and is so strong. Uh, for example, in the early church, symbolism was used... Um, to identify that they were even Christians because the early church was persecuted by Rome and they were not allowed to publicly be Christians or they would be killed. So um, they created symbols of a, an anchor, of the Cairo, which is the first two letters of Christ's name, Christos. And it, it served that other, people that weren't Christians had no idea what it was, or the fish. Um, fishers of men. Um, the, the fish is, is, uh, is represented many times in Scripture. Um, the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, there was only a couple fish, but yet Christ multiplied it to feed everyone. So we can see that there are many um, symbols that bring meaning into Scripture, and that can be used in Christian artwork as well. Um, other symbols used in Christian artwork are, are interesting that, that want to separate the divine from the human. So they'll put something opposed in there that, that uh, doesn't fit or that seems off. Or that, and that offness helps to um, identify the divine that is not human-like. But then there's the Christness, which was the humanness and the, to see the suffering of Christ and the images of the suffering of Christ. One of the strongest symbols in Christian life is the cross. Some people will wear the cross uh, for adornment just because they like crosses. Other people will, will wear a cross for declaration to say that this cross has significant meaning for me because my Savior suffered and died on that cross. And because of that death, he overcame sin, death, and the devil. And that is the core center of Christianity. So when I see a cross, all those memories come back to me of the suffering Christ. And when I see an empty cross, it reminds me of the risen Christ, who is not on the cross anymore, who is not dead anymore, but is very alive. From the early church, we, we move, jump way ahead to the medieval church, where we have uh, people who didn't read and... Uh, the Bible in, in the Catholic Mass was only given in Latin. So if you didn't know Latin, uh, you received no word and, and no growth, right? It wasn't until Martin Luther came along that he took that Bible that was written in Latin and he put it in German. And then from German it came into other, uh, other languages. There was still an element of people that were illiterate. So the images and artwork served the function of telling the stories that they couldn't read, but they could see. And so in seeing, the art was really storytelling. It was um, a depiction of one scene from the story that would bring back much or all of the story. Rembrandt has a famous painting of the prodigal son. Um, it, the prodigal son is a story of, of a father and son the son wanted his, his inheritance so he could go and party and, and have fun. Um, his other, the, the father's other son kept working in, in the farm and, and vineyard. But the one son wanted his money, and this was actually an insult to the father. Um, but he gave him the money, he took his inheritance, and he went and he spent it on partying and, and having fun. And um, after all his money was spent, he was destitute, and, and he ended up feeding pigs, and um, he was in a tough spot. Well, he realized that even the servants 
of his father lived better than he did right now. So he thought he would go back to his father and, and see if he couldn't be a servant and, and not be a son anymore because he already gave that up, but to at least be a servant. And the father was waiting for him the whole time and he comes back. And this painting uh, that Rembrandt did is a painting of him hugging his son when he comes back. And now his son didn't expect that, but he received love and forgiveness and it's a powerful story and it's probably the most powerful part of that story is the hug when he comes back the acceptance when he didn't deserve that acceptance but he received it uh, and and so he caught the the key moment of the story so if I'm in a church and if I can't read and if I can't understand what's being said during the service or during the Bible readings because it's done in Latin well when I see that story That'll bring it to me. That'll, that'll help me to understand. Now today, it's a little bit different. Today, Christian art has moved from, from not so much storytelling, because we have the Word, and the Word does a very good job of that. But there's something about the visual image that um, takes us to a new level. Perhaps not a better level, uh, but in some cases, perhaps. That a, a level of, um, if you're a visual learner, to see a painting done as masterfully as Rembrandt did, uh, you'll be moved by it. And it'll have significant meaning for you. And that's the value of Christian art, to, to take people and bring them from where they are now and change them by the story. It's very difficult to do. Um, modern art today has really been more about feeling-based art. Um, how, as a Christian, I've been moved and, and the feelings that I evoke in that movement of being overcome by Christ and being overflown with grace and, and have it overflow in my body and my life, and I'm going to paint that. I'm going to try to capture that emotion. It's very emotional-based paintings. Um, I like all of them, actually. I like symbolism, something that you'll see and, and will represent uh, a flood of story and meaning just by looking at one thing like a chalice or a cross. I also like the story art that, that gives me the significance, a whole bunch of meaning in one frame. Um, and I also love the emotional modern art that, that uh, shows and, and portrays the strength of, of Christian art. And so all these can have a, a means to remind you of your faith and to strengthen your faith. The best way to do it, though, as we talked about, the best way to strengthen faith is through the Word, by listening to sermons on a regular basis, by going to church every Sunday, and most importantly, read your Bible on a regular basis. That's the best reminder and strengthening of faith, is to read your Bible. So even more than artwork, I encourage you to read your Bible. But Christian art, to have crosses in your home, to have things that remind you of the story of God that impact your life and that impacts the church and that impacts the world, all three of those, that those are extremely helpful as reminders in your home. God is constantly chasing after you. He's constantly wanting to uh, shape you and mold you and teach you and, and make you a better disciple. Um, he, he's constantly trying to get you from, from what can I get mentality to being overflowed, to being filled up with grace to the point where it overflows out of you that you, you uh, do. So it's not, it goes from receiving to doing. What can I, how can I help? How can I be a servant? Um, what are my spiritual gifts that I've been given and how do I take those gifts and then use them in the church? And then all of this has symbols that remind you of these things. So, so when I'm at work or when I'm at home, I'm constantly reminded of who I am and what I am and my relationship with God. You know that there was a study done in uh, 2008 that showed that there are uh, 5,000 messages daily given to people 5,000 now this was 2008 and that was quite a while from today so there's much more I imagine given today even so 
so as a Christian, the world is bombarding us with messages. And those messages mostly are not from God. Those are from the world, the opposite of God. So we want messages that remind us of who we are in Christ. And so the best way to do that, as I said, is to read your Bible on a regular basis. First thing you do every morning, you get up and you read your Bible and you pray and you study your Bible. The next thing is then to surround yourself with symbols that remind you of Christ and your connectedness with Christ. And so that's going to be crosses. Make sure there's crosses all over your house as reminders. And then you also want story reminders and you want emotional reminders. So you want artwork as well. So I encourage you to have Christian art and you need the right messages coming to you. And those are messages that remind you of Christ's love for you, that remind you that Christ died for the forgiveness of your sins, that remind you of all the stories of faithful people and all the stories that Christ gave as he was here on earth. I encourage you to read your Bible on a regular basis as a reminder and to surround yourself with people that are reminders, with crosses and symbols that are reminders, and with Christian art, all that are reminders and help strengthen your faith.